I'm aware that many of you have expressed a desire for online counseling, and to that effect, we have a sponsor who will help you and assist you in that respect. So if you will, go beneath the video, you'll find a link to our online counseling sponsor. They, they have a whole team of counselors that can help you. Uh, practice self-care, get the help that you need. Are you the kind of person that likes to be in control? Now, we often think of a controlling person in, in very negative connotations, but wanting to be in control in and of itself is not necessarily a wrong thing. Uh, that person can sometimes be the one who's very organized, or the one that wants to be in control can be the, the one that's trustworthy and reliable when they take over a task or when they uh, can get involved in some sort of a project. They're the kind of person that can take it to the finish line and get all things so, uh, lined up so that there's lots of coordination. So there's a strong upside to that. Now, uh, when we're talking about controlling behavior, though, there are some individuals that cross the line, and it's not just they want to be in control to the extent that they want to have a certain quality to what they do. They want to control you and how you think. Now, see, we can pause right there and say, and that's not always, if it's managed properly within balance, a wrong kind of thing in the sense that many times we uh, can take on a teaching kind of mode or we we do want to coordinate with other individuals and it uh, requires sometimes being directive toward other persons. We can offer positive suggestions. That too can be part of a healthy approach toward life. But there are some individuals that just have very uh, poor under, a poor understanding of where those boundaries uh, begin and end. And some folks just can't leave well enough alone in their need for control. They can be very overbearing. Uh, they are not willing to allow other people to rise or fall based on their own merits. It's like, no, let me tell you what to do. They can be highly insistent and persuasive. They can punish you for not doing the things that, uh, that you know, they want you to do. They can manipulate and exploit you when they see a weak spot that you might have. Uh, they might be calculated in how much they will and will not reveal about who they are or what their, uh, their intentions are. So there are many aspects of control that can go way into the negative direction. And when you look at the, the people who fall into that category, on the surface, we can say, well, certainly they're illustrating by their behaviors and their attitudes that they're quite full of themselves. And yes, we can say that very clearly, but there's more going on beneath the surface than just them being full of themselves and being overbearing. These individuals, by virtue of the fact that they keep going back to that style of behavior over and over, are letting you know certain things about themselves. One of the first things is they're saying, I don't know what to do when you and I differ. I can't handle that. Complexity threatens me. And <laughs> When they say complexity, it may not be of a deep variety, but to them, anything that differs from them is complex. Like, I don't know how I'm supposed to manage that. Or they might be implying through their controlling behavior, the way that I feel secure is to get everybody to conform. And my way, of course, is the way that everybody needs to conform. You need to conform to what I say. Or if they also are implying, if you become independent, then that means that I'm unnecessary. I don't like that. That scares me too. I don't want to be unnecessary. Or I feel inept and trying to figure out how to maneuver through all sorts of diversity and all sorts of different opinions and preferences. That's just something that I find to be too bothersome or too difficult for me. If I let you be you, it could be that I'll just get left behind. I'll be a nobody. I'll be alone and lonely. That's what's really going on when so many individuals go into that control uh, element and, and you can see that that's the mark of a very insecure person. Now, if you point, uh, point blank let these controllers know that everybody has a free will and we need to make sure that in the way that we engage with each other, that you're living according to your free will, but others also have the right to have their free will, most of them might say something to the effect intellectually, yeah, yeah, I know that. People, you can do anything you want. 
<laughs> but deep down it's like, but you'd better not. Or, and I've actually had some people when I say, hey, why don't you allow people in your presence to have the freedom to be who they are? They'll just come back and say, uh, are you kidding me? Do you think that it's smart for me to let other people just think what they want to think? As if that's just some sort of terrible thing or believe as they want to believe or have the priorities they want. Are you kidding me? I can't do that. And again, when people take that kind of mentality, that's their insecurity. It's like, I wouldn't know what to do with it. Uh, I, if things don't go my way, then now what? And it, it can panic these individuals. I have a question for these uh, people that want to go too far into that control dimension. And that simply is this. You like having control over the plans and the preferences and the thoughts and feelings that you have. Why is it so difficult for you to allow other people to have that same privilege? Now, again, they can come back and, and uh, more or less imply, because I'm the smarter one in the room, that's what they'll think. But no, it's, it's more than that. Um, the real truth is uh, when people go deep into their controlling nature, it's their way of saying, I feel inept. I feel inadequate to manage differentness. And so the best thing that I can do is I can, I just have to put things inside my grooves. That's how I wind up feeling better. These controllers operate with what I call pre-adolescent thinking. They're very black and white. You know, when you're, uh, before you're an adolescent, you don't have a whole lot of abstract thinking. Uh, controllers think in terms of other or same, black, white. You're, you're other from me or you have to be the same. There's nothing uh, in between. They think in terms of right versus wrong, as opposed to saying, you know, there are all sorts of different ways to look at things. So I want to hear yours. They think in terms of smart versus stupid. You're smart if you agree with me. You're stupid if you don't. That's how they operate. I'm sure you've been on the receiving end of some of those messages. Or in their black and white uh, way of thinking, they think of you know, doing things my way or that means you've rejected me. And so they, they don't have a whole lot of nuance in between there. Uh, to them, there are facts and then there's uh, complete chaos or lunacy or idiocy. Uh, there's coordination or uh, you're just making trouble for everybody else. And, and and they don't really have the ability to go in and say, well, wait a minute. There's a lot of gray here. Everything doesn't have to be broken down into hard black and white, but they simply don't know how to do that. And so they just keep going back into the control mode, which is their way of saying, I don't know how to manage things in a mature and a normal kind of way. There's an element to communication and interaction that these uh, overly controlling people fail to address. And that is, there is so much of the way that we communicate that's on the covert level. These controllers uh, in their uh, overbearing kind of way and in their stubbornness are covertly, they may not, in other words, they may not be saying these words out loud. They're covert, more, covertly more or less saying, I think you're an idiot. I find you to be defective. I can't trust you. And actually we can take that word you and drop it. I can't trust. That's what they're actually saying. Or you're beneath me. And, and those kinds of messages set up uh, relationship failure because, you know, when you keep uh, repeatedly uh, uh, sending that message to all sorts of other individuals, they, they kind of get flustered with you. They don't like that one bit. They miss the point that when you engage with people in a non-controlling way and you have an affirmation of each other's privilege to choose for themselves, you know, if, if, I, if you say, here's what I think, and the other person says, well, I think differently, the non-controller would say, well, we each have a free thought. Uh, let me hear yours and, and uh, I'll tell you mine. Let's see where we can meet in the middle. Uh, the controllers uh, don't realize that when you have that more uh, or that non-controlling style, you have some covert messages there as well. The message there can be, I honor you and I want to show respect for you. When we differ, we can figure this thing out and, and I can manage the differentness that you bring. Or why don't we proceed with civility even as we have our differentness? I think that's a good way to go. Or I like learning. 
about your differentness. See, that would be the more secure and the more healthy way to manage things as opposed to going into that uh, uh, full force control style. But controllers can't think that way. So when you see these individuals coming off with their brashness or their overbearing nature or their closed mindedness and their stubbornness and their arrogance and their insistence, what you're seeing is insecurity in action. Uh, it's their way of saying, I think I'll fall apart if I don't get my way. And I, I feel like that's a pretty sad way to live. Secure people uh, approach relationships by saying, okay, we differ. Let's see if we can figure things out and find some sort of harmon uh, harmonizing as we engage, even in the midst of our differentness. That's what a secure people uh, person thinks. And then in addition, they can also think, and in the event that we don't harmonize, I'm still capable of managing my life cleanly. Let's, let's do that and let's do it together if at all possible. Controllers don't think that way, but I'm hoping that's something that you can embrace. And in doing so, you become the person of influence that, uh, that you want to be. And other people probably needs to need to hear that from you. Well, I hope videos such as this will give you some good insight and some things to think about. If you've not already uh, hit that subscribe button for our Dr. Les Carter channel, I would encourage you to do so. We also have my Surviving Narcissism channel that I know most of you are aware of. Uh, if you have a need for counseling, and if you have someone in your immediate area, then I know many times uh, people uh, need to have somebody to help them unpack these kind of things. Uh, then I would encourage you to get that counseling. Or if uh, you would prefer, we have a sponsor below uh, where we have a link that uh, provides online counseling. And that's a very popular uh, alternative these days. And there's a whole team of people that you could choose from that would help be able to help you in that respect. And I would encourage you to avail yourself to that. In addition, we have uh, my courses, my free to be. And then we also have a new one coming up very soon called This Is Me about boundaries, setting boundaries in your life. And it's, it's uh, uh, gonna be, uh, something that addresses a, a lot of issues that I know many of you uh, uh, have in your life. And in addition, we have my books and other resources below. It's okay to want to be in control, but let's keep it measured uh, to the extent that you're not overbearing. And in doing so, that's when your influence goes up and that's when you show that you have a sense of security. I'm okay with you and I want you to be okay with who you are too. And if you're not, I'm still going to be all right anyway. And in doing so, that's when you have your greatest level of influence and you position yourself to being a person of peace.